Welcome to the Mutations and Selection Methods Advanced Tutorial. My name is Sheila and today we'll be looking at how to use the hierarchy and selection menus to quickly find residues as well as take a look at the mutation tool. Here we have a crystal structure of EGFR, a receptor tyrosine kinase, and the reversible inhibitor gefitinib bound in the active site. You can see the quinazoline ring nested here in the hinge region nicely, and this fluorochloroaryl ring reaching into the back pocket past the threonine gatekeeper. This threonine gatekeeper residue is important as the mutation to methionine here at that position leads to gefitinib resistance in multiple cancers. We're going to model this mutation in nanom. First, we need to find threonine 790. I know I've been pointing to it, but I want to show you how you can find it if you don't already know where it is. One way to do that is by looking at the sequence menu here at the bottom of the entry list. If I open that menu, select the protein and the chain, I can see the residues all uh, scrollable through, and I can hover over any one of them and see the residue number. So I could scroll through and find the residue I'm looking for. Another way you can do this is also through the entry list in the hierarchy menu. And if we do that, we can see um, the chain A and the ligand here, 50 atoms of, of not protein chain. There's a hierarchy just for the protein chain. And there are three modes to look at this. This is the abbreviated mode, where it's just the single letter amino acid code. And you can see each row has the starting amino amino acid number. So this, this uh, row starts with 721, 733, 745, etc. You can look at the at the different at a different scale, you know, and see the residue number. So I could scroll through here and find residue 790, find these threonines. I can find all the threonines uh, by typing in the search bar and hitting enter, and now I have 710, 725, and I could scroll through these and find them um, highlighted in the active site. If you know uh, the location, like we do, 790, you can type that in, and you just simply get the 790. So now we have that highlighted here in the protein, and it also appears as a partial selection on our entry list because we have something selected on the protein, that residue. To mutate this, we go to the Modify menu, and under Edit, we see Mutate. This gets us a nice menu with all 20 essential amino acids, organized either by polarity or by side chain. And what we can see here is threonine is already highlighted. That's, what's, that's what we have selected. That's the residue at that position. To change this to methionine, we simply select methionine. And now that has extended and, and put, placed it in the protein. I'm just going to position this menu up here so we can look at it um, later. And I'm going to position this one over here, and we'll be able to look at that as well. Okay, so now, you know, it's, it's changed to this, and I think I want to highlight it. I'm just going to color it. Um, I'm going to color it by Adam in this bright magenta color. It's just so I can find it faster. So there it is. It's modeled in here. Um, uh, as a as a mutant, I can tell just looking at this quickly that 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 the the uh, thiomethyl group is really close to um, the end of this beta sheet, and so what I can do to look at the different rotamers of the methionine that I might want to model here is I can go to um, again go to the uh, modify menu which we still have open and go to commute compute. <laughs> uh, oh, I need to reselect that. Let me just grab my selector tool, get that selected. Um, yep, I can go there and I can calculate clashes. In the um, clashes menu, I can also choose, I'm going to position this really quickly, I can choose uh, to continuously monitor the clashes. So we can see in the protein now there are some clashes already highlighted. I'm going to continuously run them so that we can scroll through our rotamers here and watch as the clashes change. So for this very first one, we can see there are a lot of clashes with the protein. Um, to me, this, this would not be a good model for why this methionine leads to resistance to gefitinib. It's not even interacting with the gefitinib. There's no clash there. 
Um, so, but you know, the hypothesis is if we if we found clashes uh, with the gefitinib, maybe that would explain why it loses potency. So let's just scroll through these and watch as we do what happens. I can see these first few are, there's nothing happening with the gefitinib here in lavender. When we get to the fourth one, we do see a bunch of clashes with the, with the inhibitor and also a bunch with the protein. Um, so let's just continue on. Um, I've been through these, so I know, uh, you know, that like we can see pretty quickly as I scroll through when there are not clashes with the inhibitor. Yeah, these are all just mostly protein. We get to 12 and 13, and we start to really pick up some significant clashes uh, with the gefitinib. And I think uh, the 13 is the one that looks like it's the most, uh, most looks like it would cause the most problems for this inhibitor binding in, in its preferred mode. So I invite you to come and check these out, interact with the, with the tutorial and scroll through these rotomers. It's kind of a, kind of a fun exercise to get to do. But for now, I'm gonna stop calculating these and I'm gonna clear the clashes, the bottom of this menu, so that we can see everything clearly again and close out our mutate menu and our modify menu. I happen to have um, already in the space a crystal structure of the T790M mutant, actual T790M mutant with an irreversible inhibitor bound. Um, now the strategy that, that this group used was to employ an irreversible binding of this cysteine with this acrylamide of this inhibitor to really drive potency down. And in exchange, you know, in exchange for some binding in the back of the pocket near this methionine um, that they lose with the, with the change in the residues, it won't fit if they go deeper in the pocket. So they compensated for that with um, higher binding affinity. If we wanted to reverse engineer this, I want to show you how we can quickly find a cysteine in, our, in an active site um, or in, an, in a region, any region of the protein that you want to look for. In this case, I'm going to use a technique um, that we have in Nanome where I can go to, to the bound ligand here in light blue, and I can select the surrounding residues. Did I get that selected? Yes. So now all these surrounding residues are highlighted, and the ligand is not. This is convenient for a lot of techniques that you can use. You could put surfaces on that. Um, you can extend that selection to go, to go broader. This is, this is um, focused on a five angstrom radius. But now that I have that selected, I can use the advanced selection menu here in orange, and I can filter within this selection looking specifically for cysteines. This might be a little bit small for you, but I, I can see the list of the residues that are there, um, that are present. And if I just select cysteine and click on apply, I will have highlighted in my protein the cysteine residues. You could do that for a broader range of residues, but that just demonstrates how you can find it. And um, so then I could start to design inhibitors like this. Um, now, I have also um, wanted to show you, now that we have our model built out for where we think that methionine might be, um, I wanted to show you how we could quickly superimpose these using our new superimpose plugin. We go to stacks, superimpose proteins, and activate and run. This menu, when there are only two proteins in the space, it's super simple. There's a fixed protein and a moving structure that are already pre-populated for you in the order that they are in the entry list. It comes pre-selected to run on backbone carbons for the entire fixed reference. And all we have to do is open it up and click superimpose. And this structure will move on top of this one as it just has done. And we can now look at these two compared to each other um, and see where our methionines are resting. So I have the, um, I have the, the methionine of the crystal structure is in a pale pink and our modeled methionine is in a deeper magenta. And you can see that's actually not bad. They're pretty, it's pretty close to replicating what the crystal structure had. And both of them are, are in a position that they would be clashing with cafetinib, whereas they're allowing space nesting nicely with the indole of this irreversible inhibitor. 
That concludes the uh, tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy coming and interacting with this tutorial, looking through the rotomers and clashes, and uh, maybe doing some mutations of your own. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in Nanome.